Hey all, here OS Reviews. In this video, we're taking a retrospective look back at the Google Clips Smart Camera. This came out in 2018 and was pulled from shelves in 2019, so it was a bit of a commercial failure, only lasting about a year on the market. That being said, I think some of the concepts inside are quite interesting and might have been ahead of its time now that AI and machine learning are all to rage here in 2024. So this camera touts as having a vision processing unit inside. It's powered by an Intel Movidius processor that is then trained on your Google Photos library. So it knows contacts and those people that you commonly take photos of and when it detects that they're smiling and a scene it will snap an image automatically and so it's kind of this concept of a hands-free camera that does all the work for you preserving your memories without you having to worry about clicking on the shutter button for example it's also kind of a wearable super compact camera similar to ones like the narrative clip that came out in preceding years to get a unique perspective on your life that you can then review and look back on so again quite an interesting interesting idea. However, it was quite pricey at the time, retailing for $250 for a camera that some thought was really gimmicky. That being said, again, the hardware inside is definitely interesting and you can still find new unused stock that was never sold on sites like Amazon or eBay these days at a vastly discounted price. So in this particular video, let's find out if this is still functioning. Now here are some of the specs at a glance. It has a wide angle, 130 degree lens. So similar to an action camera, it can pick up a little bit more within the shot. One of the downsides though is the battery life is quite short, lasting only three hours of smart AI capture before it needs to be topped up using USB Type-C. And that means one of the problems here is it really can't last through an entire day. You can't just set it into one spot and just leave it there unless you have a power bank nearby. And technically the photos that are captured on here only get synced to your Google Photos library after you connect to your smartphone. So it doesn't actually export the photos without your permission. It is using Corning Gorilla Glass 3 for the optics of the glass on top of the lens. And then it does again have both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for syncing info with your phone. It's technically a 16 megapixel resolution sensor and you'll notice that it captures 15 fps video and that's because it's actually capturing a sequence of photos there is no microphone on here by the way so then it stitches those together kind of like a motion photo uh, when you are then reviewing the footage which was also kind of a controversial choice on one hand not having a built-in microphone might feel a little less creepy in the sense that you can't really hear what is being recorded since the camera is making that judgment for you however you're also losing out on the audio sense when you are revisiting your memories as a result. It's also quite interesting that Google did publish kind of a research blog of how they worked on the AI and machine learning behind the scenes, including collecting data initially of what types of photos people tend to prefer, and then using that as the backbones for the software and the ML that is inside of the camera. So it's how it's able to predict as well as classify certain types of images recognized by the camera and again the VPU as being good. So again the actual hard science and the technical details behind are kind of interesting. The problem is these aspects don't necessarily necessarily sell a product and in this particular instance it was the slightly higher price as well as the actual optics on the camera itself not necessarily being anything mind-blowing plus the fact that again there is no audio support and relatively lower battery life that probably contributed to the product just not being very successful not to mention that this was an exclusive in the US market that actually never came out in regions including the UK and Europe so it wasn't really set up to be perhaps a mega hit to begin with kind of like Google glass in that it's a prototype and almost a market test to see how people would react to having AI on board everyday objects like a mini camera. So on top here we have just the Google Clips camera itself and what's also quite clever and simple to operate is you can turn the camera on and off just by twisting the dial here on the actual lens component type c port on the very bottom actually very slim weighing in only around 60 grams with the clip around 44 grams without the clip and then we have just a quick user guide again printed in recycled paper which is very similar to even current gen google packaging down below here we have the aforementioned clip that has all these little 
speckles on the plastic. Kind of cute and simple looking. We have just a aluminum accent on the other side with the Google logo. This helps it stand upright onto a table as well as again clip it onto other positions. Then further down below here we have just a simple USB Type-C to Type-A cable. Otherwise just peeling off the protective film on the camera lens we can see that there is going to be a little bit of branding on top of the Corning Gorilla Glass layer, which it says the model number for the Google Clips. I will just mention that in terms of build, the rotation ring here for power is actually crafted out of aluminum alloy, so it does actually feel quite premium, although the rest of the camera body is made out of polycarbonate plastic. There's also a manual shutter key down below. If you ever want to override the AI and capture images that you deem to be good, you can then snap on here just by pressing below. And here's also what it looks like when you slip it into the protective sleeve and clip. That being said, one downside is that the USB Type-C port is not revealed inside of this little case. So you have to remove it every time that you charge it. And since, again, the battery life is only around three hours, which might be enough for something like a party or just half a day session, you do have to be kind of continuously pulling it out for charging purposes, which might have been another minor design quirk of the case that could have been improved on. Furthermore, there's not too many adjustable angles in terms of the kickstand. It's always at this incline, kind of like a home security cam though, because of the wide angle lens. It's still does an all right job of just pointing in the general direction. One other missed opportunity though would be some type of magnet in its design to easily attach it onto a wall or fridge. That doesn't seem to really be the case in this first gen hardware. And because the companion app has been pulled from the Google Play Store, you can find it on backup sites including APK Pure just by searching for Google Clips and you can still technically download again the APK, installing it onto a Android smartphone. Though again, this is an app from 2019 that has not been updated since the product was officially discontinued. But in order to get started, we can then set it up by clicking on start, turning on location services and Wi-Fi as well as Bluetooth. A jump cut later and unfortunately it looks like the battery inside is completely dead despite still being new in box. That shows that even lithium ion cells that have been unused for say more than five years has a chance of just no longer functioning. Anyways, the only time that we have any indication of power is when we plug it in after which point we'll see three dots here start to flash, supposedly meaning that we are now over 66% charged, but even plugging in overnight, the moment that we disconnect it, you can tell that everything turns off and there's no way to turn it back on. So the battery is completely dead, and if you are, again, purchasing one of these in 2024, certainly something to be aware of that you probably can't use it unless you bring along your own power bank that kind of defeats the purpose of a hands-free camera in the first place. A bit of a shame and also why I think more tech in general should still have easily replaceable batteries, but unfortunately everything is soldered in here. Anyways, coming back to the camera with it plugged in, at least we can proceed with setup. They ask you whether you want to connect to your Google Photos account to learn again your friends, your family, familiar faces and pets. And while the update is in progress with the software, it gives you a few tutorials as well, including how to turn it on again, by twisting the lens there counterclockwise, framing your shots by setting it onto any object, a summary of how it recognizes friendly faces, and then you'll be able to view back the clips from the companion app and slide over to the right to then save it onto your phone's memory or upload onto your Google Photos. If you actually swipe to the left, it will delete the recordings from the memory on the camera and won't be uploaded to your account. And two clips are already ready to view. There's the percentage of the battery there on the left. It really doesn't hold any charge at this point, but on the right here, you also see out of the 16 gigabytes, what percentage is full on the camera's memory. Then you can tap on live preview to give a peek at what the camera is seeing in real time. Again, very similar to a home security camera. There's a little bit of latency. It's connected right now via Wi-Fi, but still seems to do the job. You can also tap on the shutter key there to take a photo manually. Interestingly, it seems that we aren't able to full screen this view, though it's only this large on your phone's display. There's also a little guide here that tells you whether or not your shot is centered or not. And then tapping on the gear icon also pulls open options, including saving clips as either a motion photo, capturing as a video, even though I think 15 FPS is still the maximum, so it's not going to be super smooth. And you can also capture animated GIFs as well for just a little bit more fun if you prefer. Now the video quality here can also be toggled between slightly higher res versus standard, and you can also turn on and off auto saving functionality. I guess if it's turned on to on, everything will be backed up even without you manually reviewing. So you can also take a look at even your trash and what you've recently deleted. Capture rate here can also be adjusted. So this is the 
sensitivity of the camera, essentially. If it's on high sensitivity, any kind of motion that it picks up, faces, etc., will all trigger a short clip to be captured versus if it's on low it's going to save more power and capture fewer shots and under time lapse it looks like it will also be able to capture in this mode if the camera is stable and not moving we can also share the camera with other people and they'll be able to preview the live feed again very similar to a home security cam if you want other people to see what the camera is looking at and in the higher sensitivity mode you can tell my hand as well as the phone waving over it has triggered some additional clips here as well so you may want to Set it at medium or low depending on if you have your faces synced to your account it might be a little bit better at using the ai and machine vision to know what to capture but that's essentially the app and it is very simple to use and since it looks like this app isn't really connected to any google servers per se it's just communicating with the camera using wi-fi just like on a smartwatch unlike say cloud gaming with google stadia i'm not sure this is something that will just stop functioning even though it's no longer being actively updated so it seems like at least syncing over info does still work. There's also a filter button in the very top right corner that you can use to sort through any of the captured footage by suggested, manual capture, and time lapse. Again, the UI style is very similar to Google Photos. You can even edit it directly on this app, including choosing select frames that you want to export or trim down, either saving it as a still photo or the entire motion photo. Overall quality of the results, I would say though, are just merely average. In fact, one can argue that it's not as good as even the one built onto your smartphone in terms of the sensor size being quite small and doesn't do very well in low light. It doesn't have the magic behind the Google Pixel cameras, for example, in terms of the HDR working wonders. The exposure is a little bit uneven and it just doesn't look super sharp even from this footage here of it already being cropped in. It's quite comparable to something like a home security camera that we keep on drawing references to in terms of the clarity of the footage. In that sense, with the photo processing side at least, it is a little disappointing coming from Google in that they have done so much work with the computational photography on their Pixel phones, but clearly that was not the emphasis here. It was more about using AI to capture the footage rather than process the footage afterwards. I'll also mention that during the entire process, if you swipe down from the top of your phone, you'll see just a notification there just telling you that the Google Clips is currently capturing and making a time lapse or a snapshot that you can then jump into the live preview if desired. Now aside from the slightly grainy looking footage which isn't necessarily cutting edge but perhaps expected for just this tiny little camera like this in general, one of the other complaints at the time was that the AI recognition wasn't always spot on. In fact, again, aside from faces and also pets, it often would miss shots that you wanted it to capture for things like landscapes, if there are even other animals outdoors, such as you're passing through or driving past a field with cows, it's not gonna capture that for you since it's not recognized as a pet from your own Google Photos library. So the training data there is just a little bit limited. Ultimately, you still have to be in the same room with the camera for it to pick the motion up. You can't actually just leave it anywhere and expect it to work. So the amount of manual intervention which is required and sometimes not necessarily capturing what you expected perhaps are areas where just the AI on here, the machine learning wasn't quite good enough at the time. Scenarios with pets as well as if you have toddlers at home, it can still be a neat idea. And again, it's the hardware inside as well as the concept that I think are quite interesting. Ultimately though, looking back, it is understandable why the Google Clips just wasn't very commercially successful. Just not quite polished enough and consistent enough to really replace someone capturing memories that you actually want to keep, but nonetheless was a creative and innovative attempt at redefining what a camera could do, in a way almost paralleling what we're seeing with the Rabbit R1 at the CES 2024 event, which draws similar parallels in trying to reinvent what a mobile companion, a smartphone alternative might look like, powered again by AI and machine learning. So only time will tell whether that product will fare better or if the existing smartphone form factor will still reign supreme but in the same vein at the very least this shows an attempt to try something new and that spirit of continuously experimenting is something i do like to see uh, as kind of a lover of tech and gadgets in general but for now that's been our video thanks for watching here at os reviews a pretty interesting and fun camera from google that has been the google clips revisited in 2024